And welcome to Stone Soup Poetry. I believe this is an international affair tonight, uh, thanks in large part to our uh, to our poet, uh, or at least he brings an international street cred to himself, uh, since as he's accumulated since he is um, since he left Stone Soup, left New England to pursue poetry in Paris, and eventually coming back on closer to our side, at least closer to Bo at least a little closer to Boston, and. Uh, no, and uh, continuing to work, continuing to write, continuing to get published. Yeah, I, I was honored to find out that I was the first person to ever record him on YouTube and you can catch his work on YouTube still via my, via my page, uh, which tonight's show will be on uh, by tomorrow morning eight, between eight and nine. Um, David Leo Sora is our feature tonight. You can give a virtual round of applause or a circular clap, however you feel. Uh, whatever, whatever you Thank you, Bill. <laughs> David has a lot of, of some forthcoming publications to celebrate. He has a ton of work, which he's, he's going to share with us tonight after the open mic. I thank everyone who come, who's come to the open mic. And I do want to remind you or tell some of you for the first time, if you haven't been checking out my Facebook page, which I've been, I've been spamming myself, uh, tagging everyone to give the news. Stone Soup turns 50 years old. Jack Powers died in 2010, but he was able to make sure that his legacy carried on with all of us. We'll be celebrating on May 1st between three and six o'clock. Uh, the Zoom call is on Stone Soup. Uh, the link to the Zoom call is not only on my various Facebook pages, but also on stonesouppoetry.blogspot.com. Dita Galloway is the chosen feature for that day. And hopefully we'll, we'll have follow up by the end of the year with a live gathering where Carol Weston and friends can uh, close in style in front of an actual audience, God for God willing. Um, really hoping that happens. And I thank everyone to help uh, who have not only, uh, who not only want that to happen uh, with our group, but also are working to keep the Zoom calls going and to spread the word. We're getting new voices all the time. Laura Lambert just came to us via phone, which is great. And more and more people are joining us and more and more people are making promises that they'll come on, uh, that they'll come on Saturday. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited that we're actually gonna have video footage of Dita. Last time uh, her Zoom wasn't working on her computer. So we had to have her connect only by phone and I had to show pictures like a slideshow. Uh, this time uh, we'll actually be able to see Dita and perform at least live, uh, thanks to Tony B helping us. Tony B is uh, behind the very su successful Cambridge Poetry mashup, not even finished yet. There's at least two more gatherings between now and May. Uh, we had a fantastic opening party and then uh, we had Poets in the Garden this past weekend, which I was happy to help facilitate the Zoom call for. Um, you can go to find all that on the YouTube page and on the Stone Soup Facebook page. You, you can join that uh, at any time you want. I try to post publishing opportunities, uh, news of other readings around, uh, around the area of Boston and beyond as well as other, and, and, and everyone also shares their own works too in publications. So I encourage you to join that. Uh, and without any further ado, I want to get to the open mic out of uh, respect for everyone who came. We might get one or more two people here, but let's get this started for you patient, loyal people. And let's go to the first person on the open mic. He has uh, been one of our, uh, one of our um, stalwart regulars since we started doing the Zoom. Very glad for his presence, and let's welcome up John Wizick. Thanks, Chad. It's glad to be uh, called a stalwart here. I'm really, really amazed. Um, so Michael Collins died today, and if you remember, he was the astronaut who stayed in orbit around the moon while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first people to land there. Um, and so kind of in honor of him, I'll, I'll read a poem that I wrote back when Neil Armstrong died. It's called uh, Godspeed Neil. And, you know, back in 1969, you know, my parents and I, we went down to Florida and actually saw the Apollo 11 take off. So uh, here we go, piece of history. Godspeed Neil. Dad handed me the binoculars. I stared into the Florida sky. In the distance, the big Saturn V was a splinter atop an inch-long orange flame. 
Five days later, we watched humanity's thousand year dream come true on a black and white TV. A man had stepped on another world. There was no end of possibilities, moon bases, footsteps on Mars, travel to the edge of the solar system. But the fickle public grew bored, voted with their pocketbooks for coffee, cigarettes, and liquor instead. Once we raised our eyes to the stars. Today, we look at our shoes. Thanks. That's a great poem. I just feel bad that we're using a poem by somebody written for somebody else to commemorate somebody else who was in the rear with the gear. <laughs> we need to do so. We need to, we need to write poems to the guy who was left behind or just kind of. <laughs> He's yeah, like he, it, was, it was very heroic of him, wasn't it? I mean, he stayed, by, it must have killed him to stay behind while everybody was just going to the, you know, uh, stay behind, yeah. do, his, do his job while everybody else gets the glory. There's got to be, there's got to be a poem in that. There's got to be even a, uh, there, is, there isn't, there even has to be like a, like a George Collin routine that can't be written unless we do it, you know. Oh, here the, here's the last statement written on a piece of paper by Michael Collins. It says, fuck Neil. But um, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. I just, I had just written like somebody's uh, thoughts on the moon landing and like they're, they're doing their obligatory thing like, oh no, the moon landing wasn't faked. Everyone kept, because there's a big theory going on that the moon landing was faked by Stanley Kubrick and someone played back Neil Armstrong's line and Neil kind of flubbed his line. And the filmmaker who was doing the YouTube presentation said, oh no, there's no way this moon landing was done by Kubrick because Kubrick would have never let that line go. He would have been like, oh, Neil, we got to take 143. You know, we get it right. But anyway. That's that's not the rumor, but that's, there's a, there, Kubrick is in the storyline, but that's, that's a whole, it's a very, it's a really good rabbit hole to go down. I'll and, send you, and, the, I'll send you the video. I'll send you the video. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> At least as far as naive realism goes, I saw a rocket take off on the day they said it would take off. Okay. Yes. I can, I, can, I can personally witness that. Yeah, yes. No oh, absolutely. So moving on to the next person on the open mic. We have, we, we, have, we have the occasional quiet soul. He's not here yet. So until he comes, let's welcome up Mr. Bill Lewis. Why, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here and have this opportunity about to, to, to do my best job at reading my dog rule verse, if you will. You will excuse me, but I must turn on a wee bit more light. But in my old age, my fading eyesight. Oh, you don't know what it's like until you experience being me. And I, I don't recommend you being me because I already am me. And that would be exceedingly confusing. Uh, now, <clears throat> I wish you to imagine me lying on my back on the ground reading this poem because that is how it was written and that is how it is to be thought of. <clears throat> O oh, lodgepole pine, so young, so fine, to reach towards heaven with body and mind, to float down air for us to breathe, so we may fill our lungs with ease, with air so fresh and air so clean, that all our cares seem but a dream. No hurry here, no need to rush, no books to write, no nervous crush. Relax, let the dappled sun fill needles full with solar fun. But I am neither tree nor plant. I know not of their cares and can't. But I can do the math and say that to success there is but a single way. To get so big and grow so strong that it can crowd out other ones. Let them then be ones to prove Darwin's claim. The reproduction is the only fame that those who die without a child have no future, no reason to smile. 
It's a tree that gets the brightest light, that has the energy to seed and fight and kill the others that try to test its domination and its might. This tree commits the greatest sin and has the most children. That's the tree that wins. Thank you very much, Bill. Let's see what we have next on the open mic, which I arbitrarily write up a list for every week. So we don't know who, so no one knows who's next. But today we welcome up uh, someone who started coming to Stone Soup when we were at the uh, church on Park Street not too long ago. Oh, actually, he was at the, uh, he was at the new locate, the uh, last location for Out of the Blue in Cambridge on Mass Ave years ago. And he's here with us today. Let's welcome up Mr. Chris Fitzgerald. Chris, you got the virtual claps, you're up. Oh, sorry, I muted you while trying to ask you to unmute. That was my bad, you have to unmute yourself again. There you go. Okay, okay, I was also down at the waterfront. Um, this is called The Whole World, The Whole World is a Stage. Uh, and it's a playoff, three characters, Shakespearean characters who I don't like. Um, I mean, the, the title of the piece is The Whole World is a Stage, My Ass Shakespeare. Uh, the three characters are Elliot, Winston Churchill, and John Wilkes Booth. Elliot Pound Odd were not poets. They were solipsistic swan divers. There wasn't one TLA poem between the three of them. True love always. The poet demonstrates he or she's made real contact with a fellow human. Poetry is about love and its relationship to being, not the ability to find a clever way to introduce religious attitudes, political attitudes, philosophical attitudes, support in some type of empire. Poetry is language, not attitude. Poetry's only fixed point is truth, not a shared attitude keeping someone out because of some defect. Poetry's hypocrisy free. Poetry gives language its pulse. Anything worth knowing about cannot be taught. That's poetry's motto. Self-discovery via the language but not smothered by the clever sentences of ideals. When Eliot mentions he does not want free thinking Jews living in his neighborhood, free thinking Jews were the only Jews capable of putting up with a piece of shit like T.S. Eliot. That line of his about the Jews was as vicious and cruel as anything Adolf Hitler said, but we know Adolf Hitler, World War I, two iron crosses, enlisted man, was capable of courage. Eliot had a yellow streak two, maybe three times the size of the Grand Canyon. He hid behind all the king's horses and all the king's men. He didn't have a voice. It's a British Empire squirm. He wasn't a poet, just an apologist for the British Empire. How Churchill got away with his bring back the Tsar, bring back the Sears, bring back French in the royal court. His Fulton, Missouri speech, his so-called Iron Curtain speech was courtesy of humanity's still misunderstanding of what language and poetry are. There were two world wars in the 20th century. Both were fought over the same reason. Who should rule the world, imperial man or democratic man? Democratic man won both wars. That's why giving a forum to one of imperial man's biggest blowhards was a big mistake. He didn't have anything to say. Just that his queen felt threatened, shitty, shallow and shabby. Shah never should have spoke to him. Between 30 and 40 million Russians left the world much too early because of World War II. 10 million soldiers and between 20 and 30 million civilians stopping the brunt of the German attack. Churchill swept that under the rug, flesh wound for Churchill's vision. Imperialism was the anchor in for thousands and thousands of years. Its basic premise was, I'm better than you, dipshit. What was behind the great awakening of Russian culture, Russian language, wasn't Lenin, Stalin, Marx, but Dostoevsky and their welcoming of the promises of Michelangelo and the Italian Renaissance. Freedom, Baba, freedom. Churchill, like most of the Shakespearean characters, there wasn't a royal ass male or female, wrinkled or unwrinkled, that he wouldn't stoop to kiss. Honesty or dishonesty, only when convenient. Divine right of kings, that was his touchstone, his master, the truth, only when convenient. If Abe, don't call me babe, Lincoln was president, said a Harry, half-assed Truman, Lincoln would have booted that fat-ass drunken Churchill and his British empire speak off the podium. Who knows how much pain would have been avoided by dealing with what is in front of you, not some pathetic imperial pose. We must remember neither Abe Lincoln nor Ho Chi Minh 
ever stooped to kiss a royal ass. That was Churchill's bread and butter, the Queen's empire, his reason for being. That was a Shakespearean role. When that two-bitch scumbaggy and Shakespearean actor John Wilkes Booth shot and killed my favorite president, he shouted out, Six Emperor Tyrannus, that's always the tyrants. Who was the tyrant, Lincoln? No, it was your father, Junius Brutus Booth, who was also a scumbaggy and Shakespearean actor. Your father bought eight black slaves in the 1820s. Ground zero for tyranny is always slavery. Ground zero for tyranny is always slavery. Ground zero for tyranny is always slavery. It was the Booth family that was smothered in slavery, not the Lincolns. Every day of John Wilkes Booth's childhood was smothered in tyranny. Apparently, it's beneath a Shakespearean actor, even a scumbagian ones, to admit to being a piss poor excuse for a human being. But there you have it, friends, Romans, countrymen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And who do we have next? Ah, yes. We have one of three uh, people, one of uh, several people calling on the phones tonight. Not everyone has access to a computer, or if they do have access to a computer, they don't always have access to one that works. Um, one who doesn't have access to any computer at all has actually been a part of our group online. She's been a part of Stone Soup for decades, almost since the very beginning, and she is uh, with us now. And I'm going to un help unmute her right now. And let's welcome up Carol Weston. Carol, you're oh. good to go. Okay. Uh, well, this is my autobiography in five lines. <laughs> Sperm is the polywog my father gave. Egg is the tennis ball my mother gave. Scream is the voice I tried to say. Fall is the step I tried to take. Sun is the ball I reached for with my hands. Skull. Skull, you were born with me when I grew. You grew in your growing bone. You hold my brain, which you have allowed to grow inside you. Skull, you had to be patient to watch over my brain for well over three quarters of a century. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. That was quite wonderful. And Ah, now I may have jumped the gun here, automatically assuming people were going to be part of the open mic that had never been here before, who I assumed were associates of David Leo Sarah. But when someone has a name like Generalissimo Brian Franco, well then, I, I just make all the I think I what I think is all are all the correct presumptions. Brian, I have you up on the open mic if you'd like to read. Yes. Um, is it okay if I write, read one little short one and then a regular one? Okay, great. So sorry, I, I thought I didn't realize I was on mute. That was good. That sounds great. Okay, great. Um, hold on. I just oh, here we go. The first one is a is is a sanka, which is a which is a Japanese form poem that I invented, which is a centered six line poem. Each line has between three and nine syllables. It's called the Pinnacle of Knowledge. If I knew anything worth knowing, I would know what I knew was truly worth knowing. Um, and yes, it is named after instant coffee. Bear with me. Um, then I think I'm just going to do this piece about a box of crayons it's called The Infinity of 64. There were only 64 colors when in reality there are millions. Actually, Physics produces an infinite spectrum of colors. But a box of crowns, crowns, which some people pronounce crowns, becomes what, pe what children know as a complete spectrum. How the Crayola people decided which colors every child's color palette would be limited to is a mystery. For some reason, there was both yellow green and green yellow, Sprite and 7-Up, Lemon Lime and Lyman. Raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt orange sound dangerous and violent. Blue-green and green-blue, blue-violet and violet-blue, 
orange red and red orange, orange yellow and yellow orange, are, repeti are repetitively wasteful and confusing. When they get sharpened down till labels get peeled off, then all those mirror image color combos become a blur before the sharpener fails and a new box gets bought and the same colors get worn down till the labels get peeled off, the sharpener fails and a new bo box gets bought and the same colors get worn down till the labels get peeled off, the sharpener fails and a new box gets bought. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. What do we have next? Ah, yes. He asked me to uh, put him on the open mic and little, little did he know I already did. Uh, let's welcome up Mr. Rorschach. Hey, you guys. Hello. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so here's, a, here's an April poem for you all. Uh, this is a beach in, uh, on the uh, central coast of California, and I just happened to actually be there on Saturday. The poem is called A Silomar Beach Meditation. Flying eyeball wings across the sky, the bleached blue sky of April, offset against the white sand. I walk upon this beach in the slow loping gait of many miles to go before I rest my weary bones. I hear the rhythm in the waves, just listening without analyzing, not particularly going anywhere. Understand this is a miracle. Ain't it good to be alive? I rejoice in my poet's vision and regret not the times when demons torment me or emotions unhinge me or falsehoods deceive me. For these are necessary parts of the process and only this ocean is eternal. The irregular rhythm of the waves, the manifestation of cyclic patterns the diffuse blue light of a warm afternoon inspires one to calm meditations. Whilst one would bark at the moon, it hangs in the dark sky, and both are reflections of one. Duality is illusion, all the same ocean. In this world of trickery, we trick ourselves, each of us a Buddha, eating pomegranate seeds. It is our, our duty, our opportunity to help each seed reach its full potential. Although there is no reward in this beyond doing it, enjoy the drama, dream of life, the poetry of it, and the ocean shall answer in its answer that is no answer. Thank you. Thanks very much. Beautiful, Rorschach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good Rorschach. To be here. And now we go to the man who has already just. Uh, Gave you, a little, gave you a little bit of a CV regarding Stone Soup. He was a documenter of it for several years and he's performed uh, for Stone Soup many years since then. And hopefully we'll come back to do so again. We'll be talking, sir. But for now, let's welcome up Mr. C.C. Arshaga. I think you're muted, sir. I didn't realize you were muted, unmuted that whole okay. time. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. They're okay. There is nothing every angel loves more than to hover in the air over a living person writing a poem by hand. 
knowing nothing can be done. And there is nothing you can do now. But to be the ends of form will come while witnessing what leavings do. Teaching words to woo love still as angels here yet gone, alive yet done. And another little one here um, is the only poem I've ever written with my name in it. <laughs> uh, it's brand new. And this is for meditators. The aura you are at its edge, free as one membrane of light lives, one with one being, one with one born to die, able to vanish and appear, indifferent to the ego is or was, as the ego is or was, the ear of quiet matters, not of body or brain. You are now listening to the noise of form, to be our chagra, where words end, where definition is the only, where definition is only the become of living soil, the nature of there is no war ever thinking itself to death. And uh, this is the one I mentioned early on, one more short one, and I'll be done. This is for our feature tonight, <laughs> for you, David. A quiet of passion comes to, a quiet of passion comes to compassion. To not be an egotist about having a non-ego. Same as not falling into the soul trap that rips through your ego of love and bleeds you to see your humility dying to show you ways you are not humble at all. And although this can be the finest reveal, the same moment beauty can see it is ugly. Within once one's shallow, pure, vain reflection, trapped by the waiting of time, waiting for you, as if buds do not flower to bloom, then face death as if leaves do not fall and fruit does not rot, rot, as if consuming will never itself be consumed too. I'd rather write poems no one will read. I'd rather recite them to nobody listens. A quiet of passion comes to compassion to not be an egoist about how you don't have one. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and that's, that's, it, that's, it, that's all she wrote. I've only written one poem with my actual name in it once myself, and that was about 10 years ago, and I haven't, didn't do it before, I haven't done it since. So I think one's a good quota to keep. Yeah, one that was just one poem. My name, goodbye. <laughs> but uh, it came on the heels of an epiphany and a meditation, so I had to include it in the documenting what I learned in that meditation, so mm -hmm. that I could remind myself in case I lost it. it came on the heels of an nice. Well, thank you again, CC, and we're going to move. We got more people joining us, which is great, and. We'll get to the, these new people, but first let us move to ah, next person on the open mic. It's great, always great to have her back. Mary Jennings. Hi, thank you. I'm going to um, read three new sequins. Fearful of looking small, courting neighbors regard 
with his overblown credentials padded. Running the fool's errand was her final outcome from his frequent project shutdowns, wasted. Expert, his sales pitch, but when it got real, he'd bury his head in the sand. Ostrich, thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And let's see who we have next. Uh, yes, and I'm hoping this works out. Uh, Jan and uh, James had a little trouble last week with their computer and their phones. And now we have uh, them back. So I'm going to ask Jan to unmute herself by pressing star six. And you can start first. And hopefully we'll be able to have her, both her and James along. So Jan, welcome. I think you can hear me, right? Yeah, perfectly. This sounds good. Okay. Um, well, I was going through the weeklies of this writing group um, every Tuesday morning at the cathedral, 9.30, um, breakfast is served. So, but um, from these weeklies, they stack up over the years. So I was going through them and I found something I wrote four years ago. I'm just, I'm just going to read that. Trump's son-in-law receives Section 8. <laughs> Trump proposed eliminating all funds for affordable housing except Section 8, as his son-in-law, Jared, essentially receives money from Section 8 since many of the tenants in his 28,000 units of deteriorating housing depend on Section 8 or face homelessness. Tom Barat, Trump's good friend who introduced Ivanka at the Republican National Convention, resigned as CEO of Colony North Star and Waypoint <coughs> Homes, cashed in his stock the day after ProPublica published that he had bought 31,000 foreclosed homes. I don't know many who can afford one foreclosed home, but Barrett's bought 31,000. Wonder if any of those 31,000 were part of those 36,000 are Secretary of the Treasury, former, thank God, Steve Mnuchin. He foreclosed on the foreclosure king. Okay. Then they, 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 they'll rent you your house that you used to own. Not allowed very much for maintenance though. So they're all slumlords. So Barracks, uh, he evicted a third of his Government when you're tossing out a third. So these scare tactics to keep the non-millionaires in a state of fear and under control has been used by Greenspan, Alan Greenspan as chair of the Federal Reserve and Kushner, his son-in-law, his JK2 Westminster LLC, you know, that's Limited Liability Corporation, Kushner's Westminster, his attack dog liars dragging tenants into court demanding rent even as sewage flows from their sink and maggots crawl from the carpet. Thank you very much. <laughs> For something a little different, let us go now to uh, someone who hasn't been on the calls with us for a while, but was a regular at the Stone Soup at the uh, church across from Park Street. I, forget, I always, I, I apologize, Jan, I always forget the name of the church, but the, especially when I have to say it. Otherwise, I remember it all the time. First parish. Anyway, um, see, now I got it. Uh, but she had been with us for a while, and now she is back feeling better and doing poetry again. I guess she's getting published in The Pilgrim very short, very soon. And she's with us now. If you want to press star six, Laurel Lambert, you are up. Hey, everybody. My Hello. name is Laurel. I'm going to do a short free for, free for one. Walking blindfolded up the mountain. I saw the sunset. 
a soft tread. I followed the stream, and then I took the blindfold off. And now I know there really is truth. Thank you. Hello. Thank, Thank you, Laurel. Laurel. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you very much, Laura, and welcome back. Sometimes I forget to unmute myself, Laurel. You can't see that. You can't see me mouthing words like Bruce Lee in a poorly dubbed, <laughs> in, a, in a poorly edited uh, version of his film. Sorry about that, but uh, thank you and welcome back. And speaking of oh, and speaking of welcome back, we have someone else who's joined us in the last few weeks, and I hope she's with us on uh, May first this Saturday from three to six, as Dita Galloway performs for us all for a uh, for an amazing 50th anniversary, uh, which will hopefully continue and culminate with a performance, hopefully around the time of Jack Power's birthday in September. Stay well, stay masked people, and hopefully we can make that happen. And hopefully the fucktards who have been keeping us, holding us back will not, uh, will not screw this up. You know, we're, we're able to wear our masks on the outside, on the, on the outside outdoors now but not in crowds so as long as we i don't uh, rent out stone soup in september at uh, boston garden we should be fine but enough of that although i do want to get a small theater my, my dream was trying to do a party at uh, coolidge corner theater one of their uh smaller sections but that's for another time for now let's welcome up and welcome back margaret noon So oh, <clears throat> thank you, Chad. You're um, I found something I wrote after being um, out for an outing, I guess. These that happen. So a couple years ago. It's called Park Lot Park. It's told me that this should be a perfect sanctuary between the cars i can you there and Margaret? see i'm sorry where's you, where's where's your mic okay maybe if i if i get rid of the video it, it might be easier to hear me that might it might have it might be that way but uh i, I can hear you now but we'll, we'll i just didn't want your poem to not go heard thank you chad and i start again <laughs> yeah i think okay. it sounds better now it is okay. weird okay Astonishing, thank you. I think it's I'm borrowing our neighbor's Wi Fi. Parking lot park. Astonishing that this be a perfect sanctuary between the cars. We pull up a chair and seat and rest our feet upon the flower box, dozing in the hazy sun, admiring the impatience. Staring deep into the trumpeted red throats of twining ficus and small musky mauve tinged petunia heads. A few drops of rain sparkle us from reverie, and my mom, who's noticeably come to hold tight the twining vine, introducing its way across her lap, now interjects. I must this must lest I guess the errant plant lost it is a wild thing of sorts but for a moment I thought it might be gaining ground with us for our part we found a piece of real estate on the loan bus for such a timeless chance as this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margaret. And now let's see what we have. Oh, I saw her join. Oh, oh good. Um, I saw her join just a short one moment ago, a few moments ago, and uh, she is just on off. She is just try. She has just triumphantly finished uh, 
the la the latest uh, chapter of her Cambridge poetry matchup in Cambridge, Peg, Massachusetts. You should check out her Poets in the Garden series, which is uh, which is available via my uh, YouTube uh, YouTube page and also uh, one of the main live streams that has gone on uh, the Stone Soup Facebook page. And of course, Tony's personal page itself, I believe. So Tony, would you be uh, willing to come on and read a few words for us? Um, Tony? Okay, so. Hi. Oh, shoot. Wrong with my computer. We can hear you, Tony, now. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Awesome. Great job. Thank you. I'm sitting up here editing my poem. <laughs> Great job for Chad. I want to say thank you so much. Happy 50th anniversary. Um, we can say that around now. I just want to shout out to Chad because um, without him, so much of us, so many of us would be, um, I don't look right. Okay, wait. Do I care? Do I care? <laughs> look at my glasses. I look 47 this June. Okay, wait. So. <laughs> great, Tony. You look great. Okay, wait. So I just want to shout out to Chad. You've kept this running for 10, 15. It's the 50th anniversary and we're here because of you. Thank you for still bringing us together and making this our poetry home for some of us. Ooh. Oh man, am I to read poetry? I hope. So I don't know how this is gonna go. We're just gonna see. Bill, nice picture. Hi everyone. Hi, Mackler. Anyway, I went to this store, the WF, and I was like, ooh. And I brought this piece of fruit, and I brought this piece of fruit. So I call this crossbreed. Crossbreed because it's the leaves and the stems that tricked me. Because eating it was the best piece of sunshine in my mouth. I've had this spring, this dawning spring, because I want the sun in my mouth. The delay, the pause of goodness. I think I'm gonna get up in the morning and I'm gonna do my strawberries, the ones I rinsed. Crossbreed because they switch your thoughts in the store because of the stem and the leaf. I thought it had seeds. I used to buy the other ones, the teeny ones that all kind of look the same, but were so delicious in the bag. It was presented to me like some gift, but it was a cheap angel. For when you burst it open, there was no seed inside. I know most food comes from seeds, but this didn't have seeds. It had leaves. And I thought the rule meant that that's from the tree and it should have seeds. But my mind, you see, cross breed. It's supposed to be that, but now it's different. But was it always that? This current time is 500 years. Crossbreeds. Every leaf, every fruit with a leaf got something in the middle, yes? Fluffy, inviting in the mouth, a little bit of sun. Some plantains in the mix. Sun. So you can come, plant a garden, but let me not speak of gardens. For this is empty fruit, these crossbreeds. Watch the empty fruit you bite into and sleep with or even talk to. Watch what you sign, 
This is a sign of a new season. The things that were are now different and changing. This pummel forward into your ownness. Because the problems remain the slip slide and it's still the same. It's just a different slip slide and slip on another level, crossbreed. And maybe it's time to learn those other levels because if you never knew, move, you stay in place. Don't criticize me because I'm trying to run that race of change into a new season, closer to 50, thinking of retirement, a new future. It's not a sin. No one will make me feel that way, like the plans and the goals like daddy said, figure it out and run towards the work. Crossbreed. From a seedless um, Clementine, I was tricked because it had a stem and a leaf. Nothing in the middle, y'all. Thank you, Chad Parento. Thank you, you, Tony. You gave me voice tonight. Love thank you, Tony. Great Love you, Tony. And uh, thank you for our amazing uh, Cambridge Poetry in the Garden. Check out that YouTube page. Check out that YouTube video. It's amazing. Thank you. I'm going to post some pictures and share the video as well. Awesome. Up, up can, next. can Tony put the uh, thing in the chat? Uh, Chad, uh, Chad said there's a couple more before uh, Saturday. Yes. Can you put those dates and times in the chat? Yes. Thanks. Cool. Up next, closing us out for the open mic so we can get to David. And thanks to everyone who has uh, waited so patiently. And thanks to David for waiting so patiently. This next person has been with Stone Soup also near us since the damn beginning. He is, uh, he's been a mime, a, po a poet, a performer, a singer, a dancer. He is currently a columnist with oddballmagazine.com, a great place for your poetry. New people take note. We're, all, we're always looking for new voices, especially in reaction to the stuff that's going on today. Spread, uh, send your words and spread the word to other people. We're looking for as many diverse voices as we can. Um, this person has a column every Thursday morning at Oddball Magazine published without fail called it's a poem column, as I call it, called It's All One Thing. And um, he's also been part of uh, several Stone Soup publishing ventures like Fresh Broth the, um, and th the Stone Soup Anthology, which I'm hoping to get re-released this year. Uh, Stone's Throw the Spoonful Online and the first online tribute uh, journal to Stone Soup and many, many other things besides that before, way before me. Let's welcome up Mr. James Van Loy. Hi, Chad. Hey, James. Okay, so I've got something here. It's called Wing Being After Apocalypse. And it's actually from an old drawing I did way back in the 1970s, which was called Wing Being and was part of a series called After Apocalypse. Wing Being, After Apocalypse, the 1970s time that dragged on and on. Vietnam ongoing until 1975. An embargo exacerbated war economy going sour is the first cohort of baby boomers, a great wave in job markets, not enough, never enough to go around austerity, knocking at door, turn public, private, turnstile. You know who won that one time after times of contingent worker on your own, somehow never managed to find a way out when now, 45 years later, I'm so in, 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 how my spear has shrunk back to time itself of childhood forever time, endless actuality. I can't stand it. It's so intense, overwhelming moments of tight circumference to defy words and offer only sly hints at what's really going on and waiting still this awareness, rushing, 
gushing, filling space, delirious continuum of flying to nowhere now here. And here's the song. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrop are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day. Lulled by the moonlight have all passed away. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song. List while I woo thee with soft melody. Gone are the cares of life's busy song. Beautiful dreamer, how it's gone to me. Beautiful dreamer, how it's gone to me. Thank you very much, James. Wonderful close to the open mic as always. And now, whoops, and now we can bring ourselves to the feature tonight. I get to read the boilerplate. We all say nice things about him before and after the reading. And best of all, he has his reading somewhere in the middle of that. And as a matter of fact, I think it's exactly in the middle of all of that, which is convenient. So we have, we have the great pleasure of, uh, we've had the great pleasure ever since Stone Soup started the online format, which will hopefully continue in some way, maybe half meeting, half doing online, just because I don't want to lose the online family that we've accumulated over the years. It's getting tougher and tougher to meet and tougher and tougher, tougher, and, tougher and tougher to live in Boston and tougher and tougher to have a place where people can gather. And as bars are closing and other venues are uh, becoming scarce, we're having a tougher and tougher time of finding a place where even if we want to have a big, sh big shindig and invite more than 20 people, we don't currently have the venues that will allow us to do that. So it's kind of a bummer. But so I'd like to at least have the online format where as long as I pay a uh, monthly price to Zoom, we can at least uh, meet as many people as we want, when we want, and how we want, and have whoever we want to feature regardless of whether they bring a draw or not. You know, not worrying about a draw is great, but I think everyone here has been a superstar, so that's what counts. It was always the goal of Stone Soup to bring new people to the mic and also to welcome back old friends who did their job great well. The, this next person was has been both to our venue at one at one time, and this uh, his name is David Leo Sara. I'm about to read the boilerplate uh, for, his, for him. David Leo Seurat is a Canadian-American poet who has had, I believe, 108 publications. Let me triple check that. He has had, <laughs> you know, sorry, 103 publications in eight countries in four different languages. Uh, US and France, India, the Czech Republic, Luxembourg, Zimbabwe, to name a few. His work has been translated into French and is now being translated into Spanish, German, and Czech, and possibly Serbian as well. He has lived and performed in Paris for seven years and now holds, now hosts from his native New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, he also hosts, he, that's where he hosts the global open mic, the spoken word online, spoken word Paris after the quarantine. He, his first poetry collection, Humble Doves, Poems to Pigeons and Plants is available on Amazon for just seven humble dollars. And I'm actually including the link to that because I forgot to buy a copy of that. I believe it's also available as a Kindle book for those of you who have uh, shrinking living spaces and uh, but somehow are able to get a iPad. Salutes to you. Um, this, is, this, is, this looks to be an amazing book. I can't wait to grab a copy. I urge you to all do the same. And I urge David, if he has a, pay, if he has a PayPal or a Zoom account uh, where we can send our dollars, that he shares that with us at the end. But for now, I think it's time to welcome up Mr. David Leo Sara. So put your hands together 30, 30 to 40 times, however you want to do it. For David. I'll do it once. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you so much, Chad. And uh, 
everybody. I, a lot of faces I've missed uh, that I knew from the past. And uh, it's great to be back at Stone Soup uh, yet again. It's been over 10 years. Uh, so yes, I write some um, really silly poems uh, on the side to keep my head sane uh, while I write my serious Sirwa contemplative stuff. Uh, so I'm going to start with a, the title poem from Humble Doves, uh, one of my, my many poems to pigeons. It goes like this, Humble Doves. I saw children chasing pigeons at a playground in Montmartre. As I walked by, I smiled and disapproved. They didn't notice me or my hair in disrepair, but I stared in mute contemplation of their scary, fearless, unrelenting effort to scare these multicolored humble doves who come from everywhere. Uh, so I'm going to read some uh, poems from uh, old and new. Uh, I'm working on a, a current manuscript where all the characters are ghosts beside me. Uh, and this is from that. It's called Stage of the Spoken World. This is the year of the key. This is the year of the coin. This is the year of the word and the digits of the code. This year is the new alone. I take a walk in twilight quiet, Paul Valéry's sapphire habit, to break from day's webs of words. At times I flow with time or stride forward while my mind stares behind. Memory wears a necklace of knives, each one meant for a wound of mine. But the persistence of time perpetually distances me from history, moves me into total mystery. Valerie's question echoes, will you sing when you're reduced to vapor? I want to chant at all the changes of our day, dawn, noon, and dusk. Midnight walks toward me. She never changes pace. The sorrows of my changing face. Who called to me from each myth of earth? Echo of my first song of mirth. Why pick up the rusted chain again of my time-worn story, drag it across this doorstep my shadow stains? Keep the vigil of open vision, circle of spacious time, timeless space. Outdoors, dusk has turned to dark, its tendency toward a round trip. The best way to end my nightmares is to face them. The play I appear in forever starts over, refrain of ocean waves, sunlight sculpts with fire. The now is a newborn I've never before seen. I touch it with tender uncertainty. Bless this welcome presence. Time, the pulse of consciousness. Now onto the stage of the spoken world. I can only sing on this side of the curtain. And uh, this is a poem of my, uh, from my book of philosophical love poems called uh, Blue Lotus Sutra. Uh, this poem is called The Body of Light. Dearest, I'll seek the secret to liberation as soon as this bed lets go of me. In a dream, I waited in line for communion 
at Christmas time. When I reached the beaming priest, he held no white wafer and never said the body of Christ. Instead, he gestured broadly around us and firmly, warmly whispered, the body of light. This is the body of light. The longest journey begins at the base of the spine and ends at the crown of the head, seventh heaven, God intoxication. Our words lose their bodies in this ocean of breath. Sun and moon share one soul between them. And you and I are cut from the same cloth. The coffee you often let sit in your cup, which you probably left for the angels, I privately pour into my form to mesh with your silky spirit. Dear one, you alone know I am hungry for nothingness. How my inner voice chants, let go of everything, let go of everything. Heavy worries, work, mask. You sent me a twilight reminder, writing, let go everything. <laughs> I love how you left out the of, let go everything. Nothing holds us at all, neither breath, nor false concepts, nor webs of eloquent words. Uh, uh, this is the title uh, or the first poem in uh, my book, uh, that I'm working on now called uh, The Ghost's Warm Words. Uh, this is Gift of the Ghost. Uh, Chad, at some point, can I share my screen? Oh, yeah, I can. I, I'll let you do that right now. Give me a sec. Sure. Okay. I thank you very much. Okay, so let me. Yeah, I think you should be able to now. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate that. Okay, there's my uh, there we go. pigeon village. Um, and just because this stuff is uh, new and kind of hard even for me to follow, I wanted to share it. So, Gift of the Ghost. David, I am the unknown soul you simply call the ghost who makes your mouth move holds the strings of your marionette limbs, keeps vigil at the threshold of speech, at the tip of silence's tongue. I paint paper with indigo ink and wish to share blessings of an eloquence you cannot attain alone. I have returned to you from Rue de Boulanvier and Apollinaire's customary path over Pont Mirabeau, where I so often haunted you, grasped at the nape of your neck, almost halted your steps home as you nourished your notepad with each phrase I fed you. You allow me to cover your shoulders again, like a long and weighty woolen overcoat and prickle your skin with sparks of spirit electricity. Paul Valéry, your guide, said he'd rather write a bad poem while conscious than a great poem in a trance. Still, you welcome the chance to let your lips move without your volition and take the other stance, stand with both feet firmly grounded on the ethers. Keep going, keep going river forward with full faith in the great power, puppeteer of all people, plants, animals, waters, and every lost poet who longs to write no longer 
but instead read aloud words inscribed on the heart of God rather than trade the shady coin of the spoken world. Flow with the ghost who draws your mind to its essence. Allow the mind to glimpse its luminescence, lit arrow shot from the still space between your brows. Waters roiled no longer. Your muddy thoughts have settled at the bottom of this life's conscious lake. Align your will with divine direction. Let these phrases pour over the vacant, patient page, strong waterfall of script that ignores where lions stand on ruled sheets and takes shape over the entire silent paper path. Language that looks for light, the blackbird's last outburst on a twilight branch. Cut the cords to your form, soft-skinned marionette. I can choreograph with grace. Make your hesitant steps more sure-footed on the stage of the written world. Let countless sour apples fall from your branches and ferment on damp grass. Let the wind gesture prayers in the emerald sheaf of your leaves dotted with drizzle. God is the seeker inside you. The rest is written on my hand, but only the ghost can understand. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Pigeon Village, <laughs> Uh, I try not to get too serious. So this is called Pigeon Convention. It was published in uh, Paris Lit Up magazine. And uh, <laughs> I may stretch the screen a little uh, so I can see it. Um, oh, and the cat wants to come in. Hang on. This is uh, Butter the Cat's return. OK, Pigeon Convention. The State of Automatic Temperature Regulation and Select European Marketplaces Conference <gasps> culminated with a big shebang gathering, feathers displaying welcome. Whole baguettes, blessed sidewalks. Never again would birdsong be the same. In this metropolitan wonderland of man-made parks, and wild concrete. Porta de Versailles convention organizers and catering corps complained that these birds could be so fin finicky to favor the flavor of fresh madeleines. The streets were sweetened with continuous cooing, beak to beak encounters, small discussion clusters. The air was all a chatter and pavement a patter. Nothing mattered more than fallen crumbs. I laughed my ass off writing that book, Humble Doves. All right, um, so this is uh, you know, another serious poem set in Paris, uh, though I finished it recently here. Uh, Illusion is the hardest thing. I see and hear Avenue de Versailles release its voice from words that long had held it down, aimless flurries of passersby. Sunset stretches overhead and builds a city of stone on green that seems to fill the absent sky with fiery lights in brilliant grids. We swim in rhythm with the ocean of breath. These breezes whose chord progression never resolves. Time's fingers grip a spinning globe and draw the soul slowly over magnetic meridians at dusk, strum the world's imaginary strings. Within, 
we chant a hidden word in meditation often heard. The river rolls backward in my eyes, mirrored spheres, flows over inner rocks and returns a wounded arrow. Our sharp half moon has split the dusk and cut the cords to cold denial of beauty's paint on canvas minds. Twilight's windows begin to speak in sapphire song and one long sigh. Seagulls wheel over long waters, crying out their timeless tale. Midway in the journey of our life, we found the ocean lost to us. We burned for a bond with water and wandered with every feather to seek and find. Below Pomida Bow's faint green rails, in cobalt light, white birds unwind. They work to learn letters and words from overvalued thoughts we guard. With unspoken sparks, we make our world. A troubled singer begs the mirror to glitter in falling shards just to break the hardest layer. My other mother murmurs, Maya is the hardest thing. Please push the mirror and discover it's a window to within. At the deep heart's core, leave your door wide open, let kind fire spread. I'm going to uh, unshare my screen uh, to read a, uh, you should be, all right, here we are. Uh, if you're just joining us. Uh, so this poem I was encouraged to read by my friends, uh, Generalissimo, Brian, Ira, Franco uh, and John Wesick. Uh, they were published uh, as like the third prize, in, which I hope this year. And uh, so anyhow, I love to recite it. It's been a long time. So by request, it's a play on Walt Whitman, of course. I allude to eight of his poems, but it doesn't matter. I hear the Bank of America singing. I will go down to my bank by the river and make myself undisguised and naked. I am mad to be in contact with my cash. It is for my fingers forever. So crisp, I could request a red wine vinaigrette to sprinkle upon it. When I heard the learned investment counselor recite the charts and figures, ranging them in a fan formation before me, his basso profundo projecting from the orbic flex of his mouth, how soon unaccountable I began to consider linkage, a long-term low interest loan, perhaps a business account, and why not? I am huge. I contain more presidents than I need. I will freeze them in space and proclaim myself a corporation. I will not wait in the maze of velvet ropes, though I have in mystic play run my fingers along their plush loveliness, I instead must move to the head of the business line and hold the virile teller in my manly gaze. Spending all time, minding no time, while we two chant together, oh, bespectacled investment counselor, firmly tucked into handsome pantaloons and collared shirt, 
their aroma of fabric softener, finer than prayer. The sniff of the fresh green carpet is a kind of innocence. I hear the Bank of America singing the varied carols of customer service representatives I hear intoning myriad monetary options, cheering the freshman customers and summa cum laude alumni alike who may complete a brief survey on the nature of their banking experience in exchange for a morsel of milk chocolate. Oh, overdraft protection. Oh, wise avoidance of insufficient funds in the dusky past, so often resulting in countless $25 charges. Oh, captain, my erect and fertile institution, I am aching to press my flesh against your million billboards with their smiling, ecstatic even, business women eyeing the easy pass swimmers in their muscular vipers, lexuses, and beamers. I, like the late risen yellow moon, sleeping on the surface of the sea, I am heavy with love, with love. <laughs> if you can believe that. Uh, and so to finish, I'm just going to read two short poems that were in the uh, Bombay Review, uh, which I'm most proud of. So I will share my screen for those two little nuggets. Uh, and I hope you will enjoy them. Here we are in Pigeon Village again. Let us go here then you and I to uh, the Bombay Review. This came out on the 1st of January. I was very happy about it. It's called Still, the first poem. And the next is uh, Words Heard in Dreams. And they were literally all heard uh, verbatim uh, in my dreams since the age of six years old. Still, a meditation on meditation. The dead can do it. From them, I learn to be still and quiet. Still, my thoughts are loud. Still, I murmur in images. Still, there are minuscule movements I can't control when I sit. Still, gentle tremble of hands, eyes, lips, and the mind's blizzard of pointed letters. In a not quite forgotten full lotus pose ritual, I begin to fill my body with an expanding soul, steeped in the spirit of the whole universe's blue lotus, one turning. Night unfolds the contours of her charcoal velvet blanket, and I sense my red magnetic spirit drawn towards you more than beforehand. Another movement I cannot control. My emptied hands reach for the circle of light you wear around your dancer's figure across the border river echoes of your evening teachings, lightning on my inner night's horizon. Electric charges surge through your form, flicker in your liberated laughter and gentle maple sugar tones to flash truths before my heart's eye. In the beginning was the word and the word is with you. Still, words heard in dreams. Your life is just one dream I am having. I have dreamt many lives before you. You have to give up one of your senses, 
which one do you choose to lose? Come to poetry, come to me, go to music, go to me. This is the year of the key. When all the inner obstacles fall away, you naturally enjoy the highest state. Being so good, being so good, being so good. I would pick up two things off this desk, eternity and your present time with her. There is a way out of this dream, and for you, it is through love. Spaces are known by what they hold. The body of light, this is the body of light. Do you mind living in a haunted house? Just be aware, she's everywhere. It is the third road we must take in the end, the path within. How do you wish to wear the work you bear? Strum the lines on the calendar. May wisdom walk at your side and speak for you when you stray. How many stories are hidden at the bottom of every pocket on this street? To love, to be free, to see. Turn the key of pure awareness in a keyhole the size of your own body. Hold your mind, hold your light is coming to has come into sight. Why are you still barking into a well? Careful, everything here's on a timer. We're turning into a tree. See what you can do with silence. People dream, says the dust. Does it have to be hard to design words? If you are not in the sequence of the heart, what next? We pursue and pursue the truth until we need rest. We finally see we are pursuing ourself and then the rest. Are you awake enough to see from the eye of the heart? Thank you kindly, everybody. And that's every and then B-U-D-D-Y. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, can you unmute yourselves if you want to. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. That was beautiful work. Thanks. Thank you, a million. Yeah, yes. I'm so happy to. Thanks for sharing. Beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm actually my my second job is DJing. Actually, I'm now the uh, overnight guy on a local radio station in northern Maine. So. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. I did last weekend overnights, and now it's going to be every. Uh, Every night overnight, nine nine to five, nine p.m. to five a.m. So really excited wow. about it. Wow! What are the call letters? <laughs> what, what's that, Brian? What were the call letters again? Oh, it's uh, it's got a few different numbers. Like ninety-seven point seven is the uh, the main one, but it's uh. Can I listen to it online? No, sorry to say, they have this thing like, oh, it's meant, it's produced and meant to be consumed locally. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous, but I mean, we're using a, a equipment that's like 20 years old and stuff, but it's mm -hmm. Channel X radio. It's uh, It reaches all of Northern Maine and Western New Brunswick and Southern Quebec. So uh, 
some a bunch of people <laughs> will be able to hear me in the night. Wow. So in Seattle. <laughs> right. what, are, what are the hours again? <laughs> Uh, sleepless in Madawaska, Maine. It'll be uh, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So yes, it's my per- 9 to 5. <laughs> yeah, it's my preferred 9 to 5 because I usually, uh, like I nap in the evening and stuff so I can write all night. So anyway, my best <laughs> stuff was written in dreams. So like, <laughs> I don't believe in writing. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, wow. God. Thanks for listening. Holy word. It's How just so hard. Uh, coffee. David, how many days a week? <laughs> right, right. It's going to be every night a week now. Uh, last Saturday and Sunday I went on and I, I recorded, we do it in advance, I recorded on Thursday the whole weekend's programming and then I went to my mom's house on Saturday night and we listened to me on the radio. <laughs> like Me and my mom would gave us a new radio every year at Christmas. My sisters and I, all the same, you know, bigger radio every year. We were totally raised on radio, so... It's fascinating listening with her, and, and she likes it, so I think I did a good job. <laughs> yeah. my, my dad bought a radio, so, <laughs> so he can listen. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, wow. Well, I've got Bank of America poem that was just, <laughs> just hooting with laughter. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you. Thanks. Funny enough, I read that poem at Stone Soup, like, uh, I don't know, 2010 or something. I'm and, like, uh, maybe a little bit before that. The, uh, yeah, David. I maybe even before. Yeah, maybe it was. Oh, it was way before I featured. Facebook that's right. Page. What's I, that? It was doing the. I well, yeah, yeah. I once shared it. I once shared the link of you reading that poem. Oh, cool. On my Facebook well, page. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And it was doing the Occupy Wall Street. Um, time there yeah. the the when i won a prize for it um there was a video of me reading it at spoken word paris when i had a, a blast with it but in like the earliest version chad filmed it and it's uh i'm there with my long hair in my <laughs> grungy boston days <laughs> oh my word but yeah i'll put in a link uh here while i look at your uh comments which uh, i'm happy i saw a little bit that was going on so thank you kindly so i'm going to become just a face for now <laughs> uh, just as a one quick encore because sometimes we have a second half of the open mic sometimes we don't we do have a late arrival who'd like to read something uh, patricia kerrigan you have your turn now okay thank you it's a crazy day today I was too much in the kitchen and then trying to approve it. I am um, semi manuscript here. Oh, nuts. Okay, I'm going to read a New York style poem Life Before the Pandemic. Birdwatch. Competitiveness hum after 8 p.m. Feathered creatures flock to bars along 2nd Avenue. Peacocks in suits clean beer bottles, sing karaoke off key. Peafowl and raised henlines play sexual pantomime. Robins and canaries wing it with penguin bartenders and flamingos sashay to the disco beat. The night brings them in those sugar daddy owls, fast talking hummingbirds and gossip monger parrots. Pigeons outnumber the exotics and too many chickens and turkeys make the scene foul. In the corner, a sparrow sips her Merlot, thinks about scrambled eggs and flying solo. The wine gives her courage, but her wings are too stiff to make the move. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry about the lateness. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much, Patricia. And thanks to everyone who came tonight. I think that's a good uh, spot to end, uh, to end on. And I am... Very thrilled we were able to do this for the end of National Poetry Month, and I'm glad this segues nicely into uh, Stone Soup's 50th anniversary, which I hope you all are able to come to this Saturday from three to six. I got a, I got inspired from Tony B's uh, own afternoon event, and I thought that would be best rather than waiting for another night. And because I know a lot of us are preferring earlier bedtimes, or you know whether we like it or not, I don't, but. Um, <laughs> I sometimes don't have a choice. So an afternoon gathering is going to be great. 
And I uh, urge you to come. Uh, thanks to Tony's help, we are going to have uh, Dita Galloway featuring that day. And Dita is someone who has to be witnessed to before, you know, as well as listened to. The last time she featured back in, I think, July, we were only able to get her to get her voice. But now we have her back for everything, thanks to Tony. And we are uh, looking forward to featuring that. And we're looking forward to hopefully having a reunion with many other voices from Stone Soup's past. So pass this around. And hopefully I'll be able to announce other features by Friday for the uh, rest of the month. As I said in my intro, I was hoping, I was hoping to um, hold out until they opened up uh, or they opened up places to allow, you know, until it was safe. But I still don't think with a lot of our friends, uh, especially a lot of us still injured, a lot of us still immunocompromised. We can't get Martha Boss back. Um, a little worried about Carol, but um, I did. But um, and on Martha Boss, uh, we just I just found out she broke her arm a few months ago, and she's in pain. Otherwise, she would be with us every week. Um, I talked to Jennifer, and hopefully, we will. Hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll see her a little bit on uh, Saturday. If not, see her hear her read a poem. She's still in a lot of pain, so we're gonna hope. And we're going to move for, we're going to push for a time in uh, September where we can get, uh, where we can get the, uh, some, some place rented, some space where we can gather, we can have uh, James Van Loy perform in full visual mode, we can have Carol Weston uh, be, with, be with us again. I'm looking forward to that and that'll be around the time of Jack Power's birthday. And looks like David Leo Sara is uh, putting in links to, um, I already bought a copy of his uh, book on Amazon. Uh, that's only for seven dollars. That's probably the easiest way to support him. But if you wanted to do more, we will. Uh, he'll definitely show you more. I'm looking to the link he just gave us. Oh, it's the it's the coffee app. Uh, Ko fi. Yeah. Buy a coffee for David Osara. Minimum, I think, is three dollars. So if you guys follow that link, and I'll uh, put it up tomorrow. We can definitely get that done and I encourage you to do so. And so that is great. And don't forget to buy his book on Amazon. That's a link up above. I'll probably repost it again, just for the Thanks heck of a million, it. Sir. What's that? Thanks a million. Oh, thank you, David. And I think now is the time we do our wave because it's getting late. <laughs> we, have, we have bedtimes. Even though we're all adults now, we have bedtimes again. I, something I thought I'd never have to deal with as an adult. <laughs> I was cheated. I was lied to. So okay. one more wave and pause. And we are good. Thanks, Chad. Brian Franco remains still. Thanks, stoked. everybody. I like, his, uh, I, like his, I like his avatar. But uh, come back for more, advertise for more news. Uh, check out the Stone Soup Poetry website at stonesouppoetry.blogspot.com. Check out my home website by searching my name. Check out the Stone Soup Poetry Facebook group. And more is going to come. We're 50 years old. We're 50 years young. Ah, fuck it. We're 50 years old. Um, oh, and uh, CCR Chagra just mentioned that there's a small local bookshop from which that book is from. So you're doing, you're, you're supporting him and supporting local businesses as well. Good point, CC. So again, thank you very much for everyone's time tonight. Happy National Poetry Month for as uh, little for as little as we have left of it. Good luck if you're doing the National Poetry Writing Month Challenge. 30 days, 30 poems. I can't stand my month. But I'm almost <laughs> done. Um, and Are you doing it? What's, yeah. Um, remember, guys, it can be like this every week. All we need is you. Have a good night. We'll see you mm -hmm. soon. Have a good Thank night. Bye, everybody. Thank you.